collect our file here and get going. Uh, so at the start of the game, already very important uh, for the big race on Saturday. You of course want to have a full name uh, or something. I don't know. You can choose whatever you want. However, it's worth noting that you lose a lot of time if you have more than one letter names. Like. Uh, if you have an 8-letter name, you lose about 40 seconds throughout the whole run. Which, you don't want to do that, so... We are going to stick to a 1-letter name. I'm gonna go T for tutorial. And then we're going to go from there. Uh, again, for race, it's 40 seconds roughly that you lose over the course of the run. If you release a couple of safety layers, it might even be a little bit more, but... You know. Uh, doesn't matter too much. Alright, let's select that name. And, uh, one interesting quirk about the speedrun of this game already is that, uh... You... We are starting timing on when we start moving after this text box right here. Um, I am pretty sure that we're going to do that for the race as well, but the timing starts as soon as you start moving, essentially. So, there is that quirk. Uh, yeah, we can do a q and a if people have questions, uh... The chat is visible in highlights, so we can do that as well. But, uh, yeah, let's get this thing going. So, first of all, you can only go left here and then pick up the Sword of Life. Now, let's talk a little bit about what every button does on the controller before we get going for real. Uh, so I just press start, which, uh, pulls up this amazing, uh, pause screen that tells you how many monster layers are remaining in every screen you are in. Which can be quite handy if you, you know, think you forgot a layer maybe, or, you know, I don't know, uh, stuff like that. So start stops everything, which is very, very nice. Uh, select opens the menu, which is also a very nice thing. Uh, now, the X button does exactly the same thing. So for the menu, you want to either use select or uh, X. And uh, then, of course, we have... Uh, B and A. Now, um, B is actually your confirm button for this game. So whenever you press B, you confirm something. As you can see. So, uh, there is that. A is, uh, not really that used. A is a button that is kind of non-existent in this game. I can show you real quick. A will pull up the status screen right here which shows you how much experience you need to level up, your strength, your current equipment and your HP, all that good stuff, and then once you advance with B through this, you can also see your souls that will become more important later on in the game. Uh, but for now, let's go back into the menu. As you can see, we have the weapon menu, the armor menu, the magic menu, and the item menu. Uh, very important about these three menus is this is your equipment, essentially, for battle. So, for now, we only have the normal sword, of course. We didn't pick up any armor yet, we didn't pick up any magic yet. Uh, and then we have our miscellaneous item menu, which can be an equipment, but uh, sometimes there's also items in this menu that are necessary to... Uh, trigger certain events or advance the story. Uh, the peculiar thing about the item menu is that the item menu remembers where you put your cursor, so... If you know when you pick up an item where it's going to be and you want to have it equipped, you can actually do that preemptively. I want to put my menu cursor right there, because I know I'm going to eventually pick up an item that will uh, be in that spot, so we can actually do that preemptively. This does not work for these three menus here. That is a very important thing, so you gotta keep that in mind as you, uh, you know, try to equip stuff. You will always have to select it manually, whatever you want. So, even though this shows curses right now, I will have to manually re-equip it once I get the spell or the armor that is actually in the slots there. Alright, and, uh, I mean, you saw me cancel out of a lot of stuff. The cancel button in this game is actually Y uh, for the menu, which is very, very interesting. Uh, y also closes text boxes. Very important. Uh, why that is important, we're going to be discussing later. But yeah, now we have a sword equipped. To swing the sword, you just press the B button. Uh, one particularly cool thing about this game is that when you hold the R button or the L button, it's your call on what you want to do there, uh, you can actually 
hold out your sword and walk around like this. We call it crab walking, which is actually a main part of the actual speedrun here. Uh, we're going to be utilizing this technique a lot. So, uh, what I can recommend is you get uh, used to the fact that you can move this way and embrace it as quickly as you can, because, yeah, this is the main thing you need to do in a speedrun. Alright, so far so good. That's the basic mechanics of the game. As you can see, down there, this red thing is what is the monster there, and uh, there's a monster right there. It's a goblin, so let's go and try and kill it. Now, the main thing about this game is that monsters always move relative to what your position is. For the goblins here, um, if you stand one tile above them, they will just not move. They will just stay in place because they can't handle that you stand above them, so they don't know what to do. But yeah, once you have actually killed all monsters in the lair, the lair will be freed and you can seal it in order to make something happen. Most of the time, you're going to release a soul. Uh, sometimes a thing like this will happen where you will actually just free an event trigger. So, right here we release the first guy, he's going to talk about blah blah blah, how he's from heaven as well, and he's going to actually give us magic, which is very nice. Kothor, thank you very much for the host and the raid. Hello, welcome. We're going to be talking a lot today, so I hope you're not intimidated by that. Yeah, he gives us the flame ball magic. And remember what I said about the equipment menu? As you can see, my magic is not actually equipped because the memory cursor didn't remember it. But we do want to equip the magic. So ideally, for the start, what you would normally do is pick up the sword, equip the sword, kill the goblins, go out, and then you'd equip the magic flame ball, put the memory cursor here, and then you would move on to the next area. So we're gonna go south here, talk to the tulip now. Very important. Um, ah, I'm gonna talk about that a little bit later, actually. But yeah, we can go into our first dungeon, the underground castle. Now you can already see there's enemies spawning here. These goblins. What you want to try to do is... Uh, oops, missed. You want to stand, like, one down, one right from this layer, and... Uh, Try to kill the first pair of goblins that way. Now, as you can see, in the top right, there is a gem counter. Enemies drop these gems after you kill them. And in, uh, what gems are used for is gems are used uh, for using magic. Uh, I did equip the flame ball magic, and you already saw me miss, like, one shot. The main thing with magic is magic is one way to be able to go really fast in this game. The way it works is you see the soul that we got hovering around us. And in whatever direction you look, you shoot the magic in. So currently I'm looking right, I'm gonna shoot flame balls to the right whenever I press the Y button. Uh, and what you want to try to do at the start here for this one, in particular, is you want to try to kill these guys at the same time. Uh, now I was a bit slow with that. Uh, if you can't connect all your flame ball magic with the... Th uh in order to actually release that layer as well. You can try to lure them in the corner there and then do that. Now we're going to come back to that layer later. After you released all of that, you can just walk through here and then there's going to be another goblin there. I'm not going to like particularly point out how I'm moving every single time because that would probably be a little bit too much. You can just, you know, get the general idea by what I'm doing. Okay, so here's a lair that we would normally ignore, but if you're new to the game, this is a lair you might want to actually seal if you're not very comfortable with playing through the game yet. This is a very, very, very important one, actually. I don't know, actually know how many goblins are in that lair, but uh, if you seal this lair, you will release the tool shop owner. Um, there's items in this game that are called medical herbs. If you have those equipped, every time you die, instead, you will actually get an HP refill. That is if you have them equipped. So, and the tool shop owner gives you an unlimited supply of them. So whenever you are missing one, you can go back to the tool shop owner and actually make sure 
that you can get another one, which is really, really handy, especially, you know, if you're not very comfortable with playing through the whole game yet. Um, yeah, so we have to actually also seal this Yellow Devil Lair. Yellow Devils kind of move the same way that the Goblins do, more or less, but they can also shoot magic. Not that it's very important. Now here we have this torch down there, we want to get rid of that. Torches will just shoot fire and annoy us, so let's not do that. Then we have to kill these flies. In order to make this treasure chest appear. Now treasure chest actually, let me quickly talk about that. Don't work like in Link to the Past or anything where you can just stand there and then try to open it. No, that doesn't work. You need to stand exactly in front of the treasure chest in order to open it. And this one has the dream ride. Um, so what I can recommend is whenever you see a chest, try to crab walk in front of it. That will usually do the trick, like crab walking and then just pushing against it will usually open it. Uh, the dream rod is the item that I already equipped earlier preemptively, so... Uh, the item lets you actually enter people's dreams, which, uh, yeah. Uh, that's what we need to advance the story. Now here, this... These layers normally you ignore these goblins. You can also try to shoot magic and these plants. But for race safety, and this is just for safety, I'm gonna show you what you can do right here. Ooh, nice shot. Okay, so if you release this layer, you're going to release a vine right here. Again, this is purely optional. Um, but this will give you access to actual armor. In a speedrun, what you would normally do is you would uh, actually ignore that uh, you can get armor until World 3. So if you're very uncomfortable with or playing for the first time, I highly recommend that you try to pick this up because it's going to help you out more than you'd think over the course of the first couple of worlds here. Um, and with that, we're already at the end of the underground castle. The reason I paused this, you can do a little trick here. You need to actually kill all these yellow devils. But what you can do is, once you kill one, spawn one, you can already start spawning the next yellow devil there, down there. I did this kind of suboptimally now because I was talking, but that's the idea. You do need to release this. Don't forget that. And then you can position yourself here in order to kill all of these yellow devils. As long as you're one tile exactly higher than them, you have nothing to fear. And then we can release this player. Now, if you're a little bit of an advanced player, you are you were supposed to already take damage here. I'm just going to go through this, um, being as safe as I possibly can. So, uh, I didn't actually take any damage up until now. Um, yeah, the idea now is, since we did everything we could here, we are actually going to try and, or not try, we're going to take a death warp here. Death Warping is a very essential part of uh, the game. Um, if you notice something, I had 35 gems. Whenever you die, you lose all your gems. So that is a very dangerous thing. Uh, gems are, again, very important for magic. But um, on the other hand, Death Warping is a very quick way to get back to like the hub where the Master is. So you can save multiple minutes by just doing all these Death Warps. So, uh, that is something to definitely keep in mind right there. Uh, that is Underground Castle 1 done. 11 minutes. That's usually how long it takes to do the whole world one shebang, but, you know, we're going a little bit slower here, especially for the start where I explain all the stuff. So, after the death warp, we're going to talk to this guy, who's guarding the bridge, but not really necessary, so we're just going to pass. And remember, we released this guy, and he has a little bit of a problem with the wheel here, so we'll take care of him, uh, for, of it for him. So once you uh, turn this wheel right there, um, you can go back in the underground castle and continue on, uh, because you can now use the elevator now. Oh, which chest is actually the iron armor? This one. Good. Uh, this is the optional layer we released, and we got the iron armor. Now, this is, again, highly... Uh, this is just optional, but, again, I recommend doing it if you are very uncomfortable uh, going through the game, or it's your first time playing through the game. Highly recommend actually getting it. Uh, again, the memory cursor did not save that I had the armor equipped, so I had to do it manually. And here we have the tool shop owner. Uh, and I can just show it. Um, if you talk to the tool shop owner, uh, she will be very grateful that we... Re Saved her, and we can get a medical herb. Medical herbs will always be right here in the menu, 
And you can see your HP will be refilled if your life meter reaches zero. So, that's one thing to keep in mind. You have to have the herb equipped, though. But let's be moving on to the second part of the underground castle, which is going to be relatively straightforward. Now remember that I left this lair. It's a slight bit faster to release it right now than it is, you know, when you're just there, but doesn't matter which way do you do it if you're playing for the first time or, you know, just new to the game. Gotta release this lair though. They're highly important. Alright, this is the bridge we released at the Yellow Devils, and on the right here we had an elevator that we can actually go up here. Let's ignore these plants for now, and then also move past these plants. Plants, by the way, move randomly, so there is that. So I'm just gonna stand in the fire here for simplicity's sake. You can try to dodge this if you wanted to, but you don't really need to. As long as you don't move, you only take 4 damage, and that's that. We only need to release the bottom layer here, which is going to be Lisa. And Lisa is going to be very, very important. And then we'll be moving on. Now here is, again, plants. Plants are moving randomly, so the best tip I can give you is try to, you know, crab walk into one direction and swing your sword so that they won't reach you. Uh, alternatively, if you're very uncomfortable with plants, you can also try to shoot them with the fireball magic, but you kind of want to keep your magic for a little bit later here. We do have to release this lair, though. And then we'll be moving on. Now, if you just move like I do, you won't take damage here. It's a bit difficult, but uh, yeah, we can just move all the way around here. And then if you have spare magic, what you can do here, you see the slime at the bottom of the screen right now. What you can do if you want a little bit of extra experience is shoot these slimes and then just move on. Now the last thing we need here are these yellow devils down here. Now what I'm gonna do will look incredibly difficult. It kind of is, but... Turn around please. Ah, got him. Okay. But you want to preemptively shoot these yellow devils with magic if you can. If you can't do that... If you can't actually do that, I, you saw I also shot the two torches. What you can do is if you stand here, uh, the yellow devils will walk up and uh, actually not bother you at all. In the same manner, you can also just go kill the torches right here if you need to. But then, yeah. Uh, you can uh, seal this layer, and this is the last layer we actually need to seal in the underground castle. Again! If I was doing this optimally, I would have already taken damage. Uh, obviously not die, but I would have tried to take damage and then do a really quick death warp here. I'm gonna still do the death warp just to show you, um, but you would want to be at 1 HP when sealing the lair and then do the death warp optimally right there, so you can get back here a lot faster. Alright, and that is Underground Castle 2. Okay, so remember we did release Lisa, she's on the east side, and she's sleeping. Now, this is why we have the Dream Rod equipped. With the Dream Rod we can enter the dreams of people. And uh, in a couple of instances, that will actually enable us to pro progress with the plot. This being one of them, we are going to get an item from what we opened up here in the underground castle. Uh that will enable us to actually finish up the world. Now Lisa will want to talk to you. Uh, she tells you to leave the house and then, you know, to come back, but she was so rude that we just kind of don't want to talk to her right now. Just go back to the underground castle. We gotta go all the way back, and this time... We're going to pass the slimes. What you want to do here, even if you're new to the game, uh, you kind of want to run through the slimes right now. Maybe go back and forth a little bit to take a little bit of damage. Reason being, we're going to set up another death warp right here, down here. So we open up this in the dream, and there's a chest here that will give us the Leo's brush. 
and that's all we really need to do here. You can poke walk into here to get a bit of additional experience, but that's not really necessary, especially if you go for the safeties. And then death warp back into... or, or back to the town. Now Leo's brush is another item that we will have to equip here, and it will enable us to enter a painting in a house right here that we released earlier in the underground castle. This is the final area of World 1. Very straightforward. So what you want to do here is you want to kill the birds by just walking back and forth here. With the first pair, you just keep standing on the right, and then you switch back and forth right there. Okay, I did actually get a good jam haul. Now, very important, there's a room coming up that is really, really difficult for uh, to, to do. I'm gonna try to do it with magic. Um, but if you're not comfortable doing it with magic, you can just like try st to stand next to the torches and slash at them. That's another way to deal with them, you just lose a little bit of time. But yeah, what you want to do is shoot magic in... Ah, that's a bad shot. That way, and then the last two you can... Do like that. It's not too overly difficult, but yeah. For this layer, you want to specifically stand a uh, one, one left, one down from it, so these guys will just throw their spear and you can just slash at them and kill them. Nice and easy. Okay, ignore this layer. And then we got birds here. We only really care about the birds on the right here. And there's going to be four of them, so this will do it, and then we can move on. Now, if you haven't gotten a medical herb yet from the tool shop owner, which honestly you shouldn't have, this chest will have another medical herb. Now, to the right here, you see a couple of blocks there. The first row are actually enemies, so what you want to try to do here is line up your soul in a way where you can shoot all of them at once. Uh, nice and easy. It's really easy to do. Like, once the soul is, like, on the left here, you can just walk in and then shoot. It's really, really easy. Um, okay, for this guy, this guy is actually, as you can see, oh my god, this is so difficult, oh no! Yeah. You gotta grow, grow a pair here and just move and walk up into this and then position yourself, like, right here. And then if, if you take a little bit of damage, that's fine. Just want to get up here as quickly as possible in order to be able to slash them. Now, if you have... Um, it's a bit of an uh, more of an adva advanced strat. Instead of just slashing, what you can also do is run against the wall so your soul will actually get into place and then shoot them with fireball, which will kill them a little bit faster. But that's a bit advanced if you don't not, aren't comfortable with that. That's not something you have to do. Okay. So moving onwards, we're going into the last room of World 1 here. And uh, a very important thing for this room right here. Uh, what you see speedrunners do, they just rush through this room, like just like hold up and then shoot uh, uh, or magic and get into position. What I can recommend you do, if you're new to the game, make sure you hug the left wall before going up. Because these things might actually hit you, and you do want to get these torches for, uh, for experience. Now you want to get into position right here, so that these guys also are not able to hit you. But that's a very safe way of approaching this room, there is no way that you can get hit by anything. These metal enemies down here that you hear I can't kill, they do quite a bit of damage if you're uh, not careful. So you want to make sure that you don't get into a position where you run into them too much. And this is the only two layers you actually need to do here. Now, what you can do, what I don't recommend you actually try to do, but what you can do... Uh, there's also a layer on the right here. So what you can try to do is... See, like, I have absolutely no experience with this. Uh, if you kill these three guys... You can move in here, and this will create a shortcut to the master, which we don't really need, but... It's there. I just wanted to show you that you can do that. So probably the best way is just to move in right there, and then go for that. Alright. That's not really something I would honestly recommend anybody do, but... Just thought I'd point it out. So coming up right here is the first boss of this uh, of this game. Uh, you do absolutely want to have a medical herb for this guy, so we're gonna make sure to equip it 
before we enter the boss fight. Exclamation point. <coughs> so this is Solid Arm. And you can see the conveyors on the left here. This will move you up, this will move you down, this will move you up, obviously. And Solid Arm just kind of moves left and right here, following you. If you're close to him, uh, as you can see, if you're close enough, he'll shoot fireballs at you. So the way you want to kind of approach this boss is... You want to go up here, poke him, and if you get too close, as you see, he swings his arm at you. Now, what you can do is... Just repeatedly run into him, and then he will be dust. If you're very uncomfortable with just, like, poking him and then standing here, what I recommend you do is, like, you lure him here, and once he is in range for the fireball, you go back, and then switch to here if you're really not comfortable with just, like, taking the damage. Alright, and that's Solid Arm done. It's a very easy boss, though, especially with a medical herb. You should have absolutely no trouble killing this guy. Alrighty. So now, normally, what you would do now is Death Warp, but I'm gonna be a little... different, because I did the race safety. Uh, I can actually go ahead and take the portal, so I can keep my gems. <laughs> it's a bit slower, of course, than a death warp, but yeah. It's something you can do. Uh, you want to go back to the mayor that we released. Uh, every time when you beat a boss, you release the uh, leader of the world uh, that you're currently in, and he will give you a stone that you will need for the final area of the game. So, you always gotta go back and get that. Any questions? This is going to be on the next test chat. <laughs> Wait, there's tests? Oh my god! But yeah, once you got the stone, you can go back to the hub here, and for the first time ever... You'll be able to actually uh, move around in the world, to move to another world. Now, if you want to... By the way, that's another feature, whenever you get here and go on there, you can save your game. It doesn't really matter, honestly. You sh there sh it's not really close to no benefits for saving the game right here, other than maybe reloading because you lost your gems on a death. Um, but other than that, there's really no reason to, honestly. Like, you really don't have to. And once you beat the World 1 boss, you can start moving around. So that's what we're going to do now. So here we are in World 1, and this is World 2, Greenwood. <coughs> well, you have to watch the beginning for that, Hoppy. Okay. But yeah, in Greenwood, we just want to kind of move along right now. There's these lizards that jump out of the water. You want to get rid of them first. They, don't, they are not particularly doing anything, but... Let's see this Mutman layer first. And then you see these amazing plants already here. This is an optional strat again. If you have the magic to spare, you want to try to kill these guys preemptively. And then... Now these plants, are, they move randomly. And the trick is, if you're close to them, they shoot this tree branch out and are then vulnerable. Whenever they shoot out that branch, they are invulnerable. So you want to make sure that you lure out the branch and then attack them afterwards. Additionally, if you have as many gems as I have, you can actually try to kill them with magic if you want to, or if you're not comfortable getting close to them, but yeah. So we're gonna move on to the first area here, which is the Water Shrine. You want to position yourself behind this pillar, and then just viciously slash at the golems here. And then just keep moving, hit down here. You want to keep moving right and down. It's going to be spikes here, and then you would just want to try to dodge them. There is a medical herb right here. You want that, of course. Get in position here. Try to pick up the gems. Try to not get hit by the spikes, and release this lair.
That's not a question appropriate for the stream, but it's starting in June, I think. <laughs> okay, that's everything you need to do here. You can move on from the, uh, this point right now. And there's golems here, you want to kill this one, and then position yourself in a way where you can kill this and then lure a couple of up from up here. For a bit of additional experience and gems. You don't need to kill the top layer here, but I recommend you try and do it. Okay, and this is probably one of the most difficult layers in the game. There's these plants, and as you can see, they keep shooting. Just want to try to shoot a couple fireballs whenever... ...and then get rid of them that way. That looked really clean, it was a bit slow, but this is how I suggest you approach it. Um, if you are trying to go as fast as possible, you just spam fireball at the, from the get-go and then kill them that way. But yeah, you do need to release that layer. Now this layer is optional, it will... Release a passage here, which will have an item called a strange bottle. The strange bottle kind of works like the medical herb, but for gems. So what happens is um, when you have the strange bottle equipped and die, you will keep your gems. So this is a pretty nice safety if uh, you don't have a medical herb handy, but you know you're going to die. You can equip this thing to maintain all your gems, which is really, really nice. So if, you, if you're so inclined, you can pick this up if you uh, really want to. Uh, it's definitely not necessary, though. Alright, moving on. We're just gonna move past these statues, and then... Here's another race safety thing. There's a fake statue here, and you wanna actually activate it and... Uh, kill it. And there's a fake statue right here. And you wanna kill this one as well, and release this, uh, lair. This is one of the lairs that will lead you to an additional armor, uh, upgrade, which is very, very handy. Very handy, and I can highly recommend you pick this one up. This one... If you're new, I would actually recommend doing it. What happens if you wanna shoot magic and don't have gems? Well, you just won't shoot magic. <laughs> Simple as that. Alright, so if you're really not confident in what you're doing, you can go here, kill these plants, and then release away to the master right here. Um, you don't need to do this right now, but uh, if you are uncomfortable with the game... Oh yeah, should also kill this, guy, this guy with magic. Then I recommend you try to do that. Now these plants... You want to try to stand here, whenever they move left, you want to avoid the branch, but as long as you swing right here, you should be okay. There's eight plants in this lair. And you need to kill all of them. There we go, and then we can enter the fire shrine. Now what you want to do here is you want to take the hit from the scorpion if you can, and then just slash these enemies down. Uh, what you can do also is like move up whenever you have space, and it will spawn an enemy in the top left. Okay, we spawned the three firemen in the top left there. Damn it. There we go, and kill them already ahead of time. And we want to move quickly here, kill the first blizzard, position ourselves so we can kill the soul again, uh, or as well. To kill these lizards one after another. Okay, from here we will have another additional race safety. Uh, normally we would just move down from here, but now we're gonna move up left. There is lizards that will be coming towards us right here. Try to not get hit by the scorpions, and if you release this layer, this is another one that you need in order to get the ice armor. Uh, in a little bit. So that's going to be important as well. No oh, damage. Okay, so back on the main story here, we have these invisible lizards right here. And these are the worst enemies in this. I mean, plants are already pretty bad, but these lizards are really, really bad. Um, let me sip a little bit of coffee for a second here. 
Uh, these lizards will spawn and then become invisible, which makes them invulnerable, and port either two tiles left, top, right, or bottom of you. Uh, so what you want to do is you want to stand here and make sure to swing. Now pay attention, if the lizards ever move up, you want to actually also move up two tiles so you can actually get them. This is probably the most RNG there in the game. Maybe not entirely in the game, but yeah, it's definitely one small part of RNG that you have to learn to deal with. Uh, the best tip I can give you is... Uh, it's always two tile movements, so when you see them move up, move two tiles, and then try to swing them down whenever they finish their teleport. But yeah, that's all you need to do here, really. From here, we can actually move on to the bottom of this. And there's these bridges here that will gradually light up now. One, two, three, and we can move. I also want to move this. If you can, shoot one fireball at these guys so they won't hurt you. Do want to release this layer. And then step on it and move on. Taking damage here is not that bad. And we want to talk to this fairy. Now, fairies usually just take you back to the uh, town, but this one will have a very important magic upgrade, the light arrow. The light arrow costs 8 gems per use compared to the 4 gems you have for the fireball, but it's also 10 times better. I'm gonna demonstrate it once. It shoots in all 4 directions, and uh, it does more damage than the fireball. So, if you're really uncomfortable, uh, you can actually go back and get the ice armor right now, but that costs a lot of time, so I actually think that you should try to do this area without the ice armor. Um, so we're just gonna keep moving forward here. Whenever this lights up, uh, it will damage you. Whenever, you know, the light's not on, you can just move safely over these bridges. Uh, yeah, these lizards also, as you can see, you need to swing quite a bit in order for them to actually die. Now what I can try to do here is just like shoot magic. Shoot shooting magic will be a lot more effective than actually trying to slash them. If you have to spare gems, go for it. What I what I can try to do actually from down here, you can try to snipe the lizards with magic. But yeah, oh. doing a great job right now. Uh, now, if you're not cool with your health, we still have the medical herb, and it's supposed to be used right here, so... We can go do that. <coughs> Alright. Another optional thing you can do here, there's a chest here, you can open it. It's 100 gems, which is huge. So you can waste a lot of gems and then still have those gems right there. Now, you want to position yourself right here below the square that I'm standing because then the lizards will never actually touch you. So we need to release this bird right here. And... Yep, there's my medical herb. Ignore the fireman here. If you can, you want to shoot one light arrow right here, just to get a little bit of additional experience. If you don't have enough gems, there's another chest here that you can take for a couple gems and we are at 200. Man, that's a lot. Okay, and that's the fire shrine already. We can release the bridge here and move on. Uh, now, in order to access the next part of the game, we actually need to get an item in Greenwood, so we need to walk all the way back and do that real quick. Now, in Greenwood, now is a very good time, actually, to... Uh... Oh, wrong hole. Now is a very good time to go get that ice armor. So we will be doing that first. We're gonna equip the Dream Rot. And then we release this tree. And... We wanna... 
push on this layer, then talk to the birds. And that's everything we need to do. Uh, this will give you access to a chest in the top right here. So I have the ice armor. Now, I talked about it for a little bit. The ice armor, additionally to having more defense, will actually uh, prevent damage from the fire. So if you have trouble with the fire bridges in the basement in the fire shrine, if you have this equipped, you won't actually take damage even if they're lit up. So that's one thing you can do for sure. Uh, in order to be very safe. So we need to walk over this crocodile, talk to it, and again, equip the dream rod, and enter this bird's dream. And it's Turbo the dog, and once he's done, uh, talked all about his lines, we're done here. And then once you were in that dream and pushed the lair, you can get to the Leaves of Greenwood right here, which you need to progress. Um, if you're new to the game, I would recommend you talk to the Small. The Small is another soul from heaven, and will actually enable to uh, have you see in the next shrine that we're going to, so... Uh, this is a very nice thing. Uh, if you don't quite know where to go in certain places, so we're just gonna take him and be moving on. Okay, gotta go back through the fry fire shrine. You don't actually have to equip the Leaves of Greenwood, by the way. They are in your inventory, but yeah, you don't actually have to equip them. Those are the Leaves from Greenwood. Okie dokie. Now we have 200 gems now, which is absolutely nuts. Uh, but before entering the shrine here, um, if you have about 80, you should be fine. You should be fine. I'm gonna go through the next room a little bit slower than I normally would, but I'm just gonna like pretty much show you the concept of how you want to approach the room. So this next room is actually really, really fun. On the right here, we have the souls. You want to make sure to activate them. Shoot this guy once. Make sure that he spawns in the top left again. Move right here. Activate all of those souls. Pull everything together and then just have fun with this. Okay, there's another one. That will kill all of the layers above. As you can see, I just used pretty much 40 gems, so that's nothing. Okay, moving on. We need to kill these teleporting lizards. Again, if you have so much magic, you can also just do that, I guess, but uh, I don't know. You're not supposed to have this much magic. <laughs> Okay, make sure to not get hit by the suns, by the way. Okay, moving on. There's more lizards here. Now let the sun pass. And then... I'm gonna keep killing the lizards. Now, once the sun has passed, you can try to do something very advanced here. There is a teleporting lizard lair in the top left here. And uh, you absolutely don't need to do what I'm about to try to do. But, uh, if you stand on this here, you can move this way to spawn one lizard at the time in the top left and not make him move. But you need to move exactly like I do, from square to square, essentially. If you move a little bit further down, or a little bit too far to the left, then it's donezo. I didn't actually spawn everything, I think. But we'll find out right now. If you do that, you can shoot arrow, move right, and then shoot these lizards. Even though you're not supposed to. It's a very nice technique right there. Okay. So, if everything is said and done in that regard, we can move on to the basement. Now, as you can see, since I got the mole, I now have this 
soul circling around me, I can see everything. You don't need to get the soul to move here, but it definitely helps you out. You want to move top right first to kill these lizards. Again, crab walking is a really nice thing to even keep... ...to keep uh, the direction you face in. And then these lizards will be done, you wanna move around here. Man, I'm not used to actually having light down here! <laughs> it's so bright! Oops, I moved into the sun, that's a mistake. Alright, and then you wanna move in here. Uh, you can actually kind of ignore the top layer for a little bit. There's going to be four lizards there. You don't need to kill them all immediately, but I mean, you can try to. Okay. And this is a very important one. This will bring you back to the master. Uh, you can get an HP refill here if you need it. It's a very important thing. I'm gonna try to move on, there's going to be spirits here, we're shooting, boom, dead, nice. You don't need to do it that way, but that's the fastest way you can do that. And then we will move on to the boss battle. Now, friends, this is the hardest boss in the game. And uh, this boss highly, highly operates on, you know, based on where you stand uh, relative to him. So, I suggest, if you want to practice something in this game, practice this boss fight, because this boss is really, really dangerous. Um, if you're not comfortable uh, with movement yet, I also recommend you go back to World 1 and get a medical herb, because right now we don't actually have a medical herb. I won't need a medical herb, obviously, but this is uh, definitely the boss that takes the most out of you. So I'm gonna try to explain on how it works while we go through it. So there's three lion head statues here. We have the green one, the blue one, and the red one right here. Uh, it goes green, blue, red. You have to kill them one after another. What you want to do... Uh, we're going to go for the first one. Uh, right now. What you want to do is you want to stand close to him and then pull him to the right. And we're going to try to do it in a way where he is not immediately going to end up Triggering, okay, the blue one. Whenever you get close to the statue you were supposed to kill, that will activate. So now the blue one will activate when I get close to it. What you want to do before you do that is, if you're not comfortable, position yourself like this for crab walking. Alright, this one is really, really tricky and you have to absolutely move like I will, or else you will get killed. Okay, I'm gonna kill the blue one now. What you wanna do, I killed him a little bit late because I didn't move correctly, but at least I didn't get hit. What you wanna do now is go to the bottom right where the red statue is as fast as you can, and then move all the way to the right, uh, right next to the square to the right of it. So let's try and do that. That's how easy the redhead is. So if you spawn the redhead and move all the way to the right here, um, he will get in this AI loop, where you have to basically move one tile to the right every single time. But it has to be exactly one tile. The redhead is definitely the, the most difficult one out of all of them. Again, uh, very hard boss. With armor and a medical herb, you should be able to take a couple of hits right here. But that is world 2. I guess that's a split. Uh, especially the red uh, lion head wool statue will probably take you a little bit of practice and getting used to to actually get it down. But yeah, once we've done that, we are going to return to the Guardian of the Woods. He's going to give us the next stone, and we will be able to move on to World 3.
Now, World 3 is actually the longest world in the game, so... Buckle up. <laughs> I'm gonna talk to this uh, statue, and she will tell you that we should go to South Terra. Now, what that means is she actually unlocked the portal in the Master's Hub down here that we are supposed to get into. This is one of the most difficult areas in the game. Um, especially if you haven't picked up armor up until now, which I recommend you actually pick up armor. Okay, so for starters, we want to move through here. And then try to not get hit here, very difficult, but if, if you get hit, that's not a big deal. Move past the donkeys. And then shoot magic. It's going to be stones here, shoot magic. Want to get rid of this bird? Alright. These stones, you want to absolutely have gems for. I'm gonna demonstrate, like you can see, you saw that I killed them with one light arrow shot, but I'm gonna demonstrate how long it takes to kill them if you don't have magic. Yeah, you don't want to have that happen, so make sure you have gems for this place. <coughs> Excuse me. That's everything you need to do here, now we're gonna spawn plants here. Wait, just a tad, you need to wait, I believe 7 frames right here to spawn. All of the, uh, another additional plant right there. So what we can do for this next area is we lure out the fish, he shoots a bubble, we dodge it, and then every plant should be spawned by now. You can just shoot a little bit of magic if you have it left over, and then kill everything. It's gonna spawn more rocks, which you want to kill with magic. Uh, where's my soul? Then, uh, now we're going for it. Ha ha ha! Got him! Now what you can do is, you can already take damage here. Uh, you want Death Warp after you release this lair. I recommend you don't try to do that. Um, these Donkey Kongs, if you're the one tile above them, they won't actually move. But it has to be exactly one tile, so make sure that you do that. If you're like a half tile up to the top, they will move in your face and you will die really quickly. So make sure that you will stand right here in order to actually be able to kill them safely. Um, if you activate this layer, you can also just like me, keep this stance and then just do this. Very important, very very important. Alright, so once we sealed this layer, we will release a mermaid, and that's everything we need to do. Now we need to death warp, although, I mean with my 100, yeah, let's death warp, screw it. Can probably use the, the bottle we have here, and whenever you want to death warp, you also want to unequip your armor so you take more damage. Now this fish is nice enough to actually take us to, uh, back to the hub here. Cool. Uh, if you, whenever you death warp and you unequip your armor, remember to re-equip the armor! Exclamation point! <laughs> I cannot stress this enough! But yeah, we released this mermaid right here, and she will give us uh, the bubble armor. So my re-equipping right now was nope, kind of useless because we're going to equip the bubble armor soon, anyways. But yeah, you don't want to equip the bubble armor quite yet. You would just want to rush through here for now, taking a little bit of damage. So you want to kind of approach this going like this, because there's going to be Donkey Kongs right here that will get close to you. If you're not comfortable taking damage early, just kill them this way. It's totally fine. What you're supposed to do is like just like take damage here for Death Warp and then, you know... Seal the lair. Always requit directly after death work would probably be best. Re-equip is what you mean. Yes, 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 yes. So, now we want to death warp again. So we're gonna take this bubble and gonna try to do it. That was good. And goodbye gems. No, my gems. So, we're gonna equip the newly acquired bubble armor right now and uh, keep moving. What we released here is the first of four statues that we need to release. This will enable us to go to Rockbird. Yep. 
Again, make sure you have the uh, bubble armor on. And for starters here, there's a layer here, we're gonna ignore this one. Uh, we're gonna come up to these... Uh, let's get them on screen. You see the jellyfish right there. Uh, these jellyfish will always move towards you if you're within one vertical tile of them. Uh, so that's what you kind of want to try to force. Now one trick to this layer, and specifically, is you kind of want to stand down like this. They will always move towards you. And then you can just slash them to death. This is a very nice way of dealing with them. Um, if you're not very close to them, they will just move randomly, and it can get very annoying uh, to actually make sure that you deal with them properly. Oops, don't move too far away. Okay, that's eight. And we can go here. Just gotta move down here. And then... We gotta move past this guy. If you're taking damage, don't worry about it. Okay, so what you want to do here is you want to move all the way to the right. You will see this bird spawn. You can kill them... them by... no, you should stand here. Take minimal damage. This is just the safety, again. You can get some gems here, and most importantly... This chest will have a medical air for you if you don't have one, so that is very, very important. You want to move up from here, and then place yourself next to these Donkey Kongs. There's eight of them, so if you're inclined to count, feel free to do so. Need to kill all of them. I haven't actually counted. This should be the last one, though. No math, please. Now, what you can do is you can spawn one Donkey Kong down there preemptively, and then go down here, there's four right here that you will just immediately kill, and then move on from here. Now, this is where magic becomes very useful. Uh, you see all these stones here, if you position your soul correctly, then you can kill this in one shot. Uh, you want to move left here and move this stone down by two. Shoot one magic right here to kill that one, and then you can position your soul by walking up left, and then kill all these stones at the same time. Now, we only want to focus for this one on the top couple, uh, the top two layers. If you take damage, again, don't pay attention to it, you want to do a death warp after this one. You can kill those eventually, 2 HP is actually pretty good. Yeah, if you just stand in the top left corner, you don't actually take that much damage, if you're not sure about that, so don't have to do that. Okay, but that's pretty much it for Rockbird. You want to unequip the armor, we don't have anything on, and then Death Warp, and then that's that. Do not rush, but be patient. Okay, so a lot of safety coming right at you. Um, I'm gonna equip the medical herb right now. We want to talk to the left statue. Don't forget to do this. Talking to the statues is very important. This will make way, open up the way to Durian. Uh, and uh, you can see I already preemptively equipped the medical herb. That's for very specific reasons. First of all, you want to do this. Then you want to go to the right here and pick up... If you can, the mermaid tears, which is another safety that you don't you don't really necessarily need that, but it's definitely recommended to pick this up for a first timer. All right, so far so good. Now again, we want to like ignore this horse right now. Well, maybe kill the jellyfish because he's annoying. And then in the bottom left is the way to Durian. Now right here again, Jellyfish Lair, you want to be vertically within one, so they will actually start to rush you. So standing right here is a pretty good, actually, uh, actually a pretty good place. Now come back to me, dude. So you don't need to kill the Seahorse Lair, but it's right there, so you might as well. Move all the way down and go left here. Just ignore all of these bad boys. Okay. 
and then we're about to enter Durian. Now, Durian is a very, very difficult place, so that's why we picked up all the safeties, the additional medical herb that I already equipped. This place sucks. Sorry, I don't have a better word for that. Uh, the first thing you want to do is go to the left here, position yourself all the way in the bottom, and kill the first bird. Now, for the second bird, we want to move up and spawn him. Pull him all the way to the left here, left of the monkey lair, you should be able to just swipe and kill him. This will ensure that you already seal or release, uh, free the lair on the right with the birds. Just keep swiping at the monkeys and you will eventually be able to actually release this lair. This lair is very important, releases Lou the dolphin. Very important thing. Alright, moving on, we will go move up here, stick to the left, one down, one left from this layer, you want to kill all these Donkey Kongs. You'll notice that all these fireballs are raining down. Uh, if you have the safeties, don't worry about it. If you don't have the safeties, you worry about it. Alrighty. So now we're gonna spawn this bird whenever he shoots his tornado. You can start moving up a little bit and then you can kill him. It's just two, so you'll make sure that you do that properly as well. Sif, thank you very much for the reset, man. Sorry, I can't really react much, but let me officially welcome you back to Team Wyverns. Thank you, thank you. All right, we will keep moving from here. Now coming up again, I'm gonna do this the slow way. Oh, dude should die. He don't need to kill that guy, but I didn't want to take damage. Uh, kill those rocks that I just killed with magic. Then we have these rocks right here as well. Hey! The rock didn't die. Rude. Alright. So we'll keep moving for now. These metal monkeys, don't worry about them. Just ignore them. And then we will release this layer. Now if you have enough gems, which uh, is 45... Well, yeah, let's say 45 for simplicity's sake. You can actually kill the monkeys that are south from you right here. You can try to kill them with magic, let me... Quickly take a sip of coffee, but for simplicity's sake, we're gonna not do that right now. We're just gonna keep moving. Now, all you need to do is kill the monkeys on the left here, and then you're done, theoretically. However, that's a bit difficult, this lava will damage you significantly, so what we are going to do here... is... We're going to try and employ our safeties and uh, make sure that we don't die. So I'm going to show you how to get all the way up here. And then... Do I use them automatically or do I have to equip them? I don't even know. I haven't done this in ever. I have to equip them probably. Yeah, if you pour the mermaid tears down there... Um, the lava will actually disappear. Which is very, very handy. Because then, you don't take damage on this thing. Now it's just time to... ...kill these monkeys right here. Oh, there's one more. Three. And release another mermaid statue. Okay, before... before we, uh... Go back, though. This is everything we need to do right here. Uh, so now we want a Death Warp very soon. Uh, before we do that, though... There's one chest right here that, if you pick it up, it's the Critical Sword. This is the first sword upgrade we get. Uh, right now, we don't really want to equip it, but, uh, it's very good for later. It's a level requirement of 11, which means that whenever you uh, a weapon has a level requirement, you need that level to be able to swing the weapon. You can still equip the sword though and poke with it, but that's not really going to be very helpful. For now, we want to be death warping, so let's quickly do that. But uh, yeah, the critical sword will come in very handy, especially for backup strats later on in case you are making a mistake. So, you definitely want to make sure to pick that up if you do all these other safeties as well. Now, never forget to talk to a mermaid statue when you released it. Exclamation point. This will open up the way to Blaster, which is our last area before the boss. 
And then... We did also release Lou the Dolphin, now. He's very important because he will give us an item right now. Please save him. Hey! And you do need to release the other dolphin as well, so the way to Lou is actually open up. The critical sword can crit if you poke with it, yes. Maybe I can try to demonstrate that, actually. Okay, so he's going to give us the Thunder Ring. It's another very, very important item. And now we move on to... We did re-equip everything, and now we move on to the next part of the game. Just Blessed in the top right here. Now there's not nothing really specifically that you need to do here at the first part, just keep moving and then move with the current. And then we have these metal crabs right here. These dudes only become vulnerable whenever they are moving. If they are in their shell, as you can hear, you can't actually damage them. So the best way to deal with them, what I like to do is move like this and then get above them. You can also get next to them, but it's not quite as effective. Uh, but then, if you swing your sword, you should usually be able to actually just kill them relatively quickly. Alrighty. And that's all we need to do with that. Now we need to keep moving here. You only really want to kill this layer right here, the top one. You take a little bit of damage, that's actually encouraged in this specific instance. And uh, we did pick up the Thunder Ring earlier, we want to equip it now. I can demonstrate right now, we want to move up here. The Thunder Ring, when you have it equipped and you're close to one of these nodes, will summon down lightning. So, whenever you are getting close to this, in a very specific frame cycle, you will summon down lightning. Now, very important, and I suggest you take this part slow. You want to position yourself right next to this thing. Make sure that you do it properly, and then walk all the way to the left until you hit this stone right here. And then let them do their thing. There's three metal monkeys here. And let them do their thing, and then you start moving left. Uh, left, uh, you start moving right next to the node and kill them. That is a very safe way of doing this. Uh, if you are an advanced player, you can try to do this half tab below so you take gradual damage from the monkeys and all that good stuff. But I suggest, really suggest, if you're new, just do it the safe way. Position yourself left of this node, go all the way to the left next to the stone, take the three hits, and then go to the right. That's a very easy way of taking care of these metal monkeys. You cannot damage them other than with the thundering. So, you gotta make sure that all three of them reach the node at the same time for maximum efficiency. Again, if you're an advanced player, you want to take a little bit of damage, because from this point, we want a death warp. And, uh, yeah, this fish right here that jumps up and down is our best bet at a death warp, so you just gotta kinda, you know, get hit by the bubble here, yeah, kill me, kill me, okay. Boom, that's blister. Re-equip the armor. Yeah, I'm gonna do this slowly. Normally I would already equip something here, but yeah, not now. You can talk to the statue here to get access to the last area of World 3, which is going to be the boss area. Oh yeah, by the way, uh, just pointing it out, the critical sword and the normal sword do the same amount of damage whenever you're poking, so it doesn't make sense to equip the critical sword right now. Okay, so we'll move up here. Uh, one detour, small detour to the right here, probably the most important detour in the speedrun. We're gonna pick up this chest. This chest will contain the power bracelet, and this is something we want to equip immediately. Now what the power bracelet does, it doubles your attack power. 
Which, uh, that sounds good, but that doesn't only count for swings, also for poking, so poking always does one damage. If you have the power bracelet equipped, it will do two damage, so that becomes insanely powerful. Uh, yeah, it's the main accessory you're gonna have equipped for the most part, or the remaining part of the game. Now, we wanna position ourselves on the rocks here, these jellyfish will bomb rush us and we can just kill them. And then activate this layer right here to the master, right before the boss, and then we can just move on with life. Uh, the boss fight is up here, and this is a bit of a more involved boss as well, so we're gonna try to focus on staying alive here rather than going fast. You wanna move through here exactly the way I do? You are supposed to take damage here, so don't worry about that. You could wait, but it's not really worth it. Now, as soon as I move up here, there's going to be a ghost head that is going to be appearing, and you want to be, again, positioned just like I am. Uh, and I will explain why in a little bit. So we want to go all the way here, and then... be right here. Now, he will shoot whenever he opens his mouth, and after... He shoots his birds right here. You want to immediately... You can pause buffer this too, apparently. You want to immediately move down or you will take damage. The, the, after the second cycle, you want to try to kill the left hand and then finish off the boss. Very important. This boss does a ton of damage. So be ready to pop up your medical herb if you still have it. Or even get one in World 1 if you're un uncertain about this boss. This boss can be really tricky. But as long as you're one tile next to the darkened tile uh, where I was, and you actually time it with uh, when he shoots the firebirds, um, you should be fine. So I'm just gonna demonstrate it again. You wanna be right in between here, and then if you need to, you can pause buffer. Whenever he shoots the birds, you wanna move down, and then you're fine. You'll get a guaranteed three cycle. It's gonna be all good. Okay, but yeah, after this boss is beaten, we release the queen, and then we can move on. With our life here. Okay, gotta get our stone, remember? Every time we release a leader of the world, he's gonna give us a stone, so let's do that. Hey there. She's heard about us. Oh, nice. Right after that, the creatures disappeared and the monsters took over. Maybe because we let bad feelings dominate. Another tip, if you don't want to mesh B for text meshing, Y works. And Y will not, you know, activate additional text once you're done meshing. So, that's a very nice way of doing that. Alright, and that finishes up World 3. Nice and easy. World 3, again, is the longest world in the game, so I also recommend actually taking a little bit of time uh, getting to use that world, uh, and, uh, yeah, we'll be moving on to world 4 from here. Okay, let's move here. Alright, and, uh, yeah. I'm gonna do a small cut here, this is the first part. Ah! And if there's any questions now, feel free to ask them. I'm gonna take a, sh a short break before the second half of the game. I've been talking so much that my, th my throat is getting kinda sore, so, uh, yeah. Grab another coffee, uh, take a small break. If there's any questions, feel free to ask them, but I'll be back in one second.